What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, we are today. We're doing the part four of the Dream Team documentary. Uh, I've been enjoying doing all these. They've been fun. Uh, I get to learn about you know the Dream Team and about individual the individual players. So it's been pretty cool. Um, you know how they grew, like their chemistry and all that stuff. Uh, but I don't want to take all y'all's time. So. Into it. An endless barrage of questions as only he could. How did you feel in 1972 when the Soviet Union beat the United States in that wild game? Well, I had just flunked my entrance exam in the kindergarten, so I really, that was the only thing, you know. You know, everybody that has ever been in front of a camera, we tend to not say certain things. Why don't they just take their ass whipping like people and go home? <laughs> Barkley says things that we would think about and never say. We're going to have a li little revenge in our hearts for 72 and 88. David, well, he can't say that because he's a Christian. But uh... <laughs> he said, man, you don't talk honestly enough to the media. You need to tell them what you're really thinking. I said, Charles, you talk too much to the media. You need to stop telling them everything you're thinking. And when Charles was asked about the team's first opponent, his prediction was as honest as ever. I don't know anything about Angola but Angola's in trouble, I think. I don't either. Just moments ago, the Dream Team boarded the bus outside their hotel along the Rambles. They are heading for their first matchup in Barcelona with the Angolans. I can remember the first game, the real game, when we came out of the locker room and, and stepped on the court. And I finally said to myself, well, I can't believe this. I'm here. At that point, we were in serious Olympic mode. This actually may be the biggest mismatch of the entire Olympics. Barkley off a beautiful feed from Mullen, and he drew the foul. Magic wins. No. The U.S. with a 46 to 1 run. 46 to 1. It was That's just insane. a tremendous atmosphere because there was an appreciation for how great the U.S. players were. After the first half, Barkley's pregame prediction appeared dead on. But in the second, Charles found some trouble. I had the players in Angola who play against South Barkley. They told us there's no a, a, a key. The fat boy is a, is many aggressive in the pain. Rebound, Barkley. Aggressive. I thought they were playing dirty. And, uh, and I told old boy, I don't, I don't even know if he understood my hey man, ease up on the elbow. Barkley from Pippen. I let it go twice. You can see the frustration with Barkley. And the next time I just cracked it. Barkley from Pippen. And a technical foul has been called. To his dying day, Charles claims the guy elbowed him three times. I said, Charles, you know, you're full of crap. No, he's not true. Dang. I didn't uh, elbow back to before the incident. People always say, turn the other cheek. If you turn the other cheek, I'm going to hit you another cheek, too. I thought, what are you doing, Charles? <laughs> the guy is half your size. But you know, Charles was an equal opportunity abuser. Erlander Codebra did not think it was a, a, a friendly elbow. That's the same guy that just asked for an autograph, Charles. I mean, you think he's not intimidated? I think he's acting like a bully. But maybe it's, uh, it's from his personality. The United States has defeated Angola by the score of 100. Do y'all think, um, do y'all think he really elbowed him, or was Charles just being an ass? Because there, you know, if he did, you know, it's understandable why he did it. But if he, he didn't, it could have just because that guy's real skinny and bony, so it just felt like it, like a sharp object hitting you pretty much every time he went up. But what do y'all think? Sixteen to forty-eight. The game may have ended in a rout, but afterwards, the result was overshadowed by the controversy. Well, with the elbow. Well, he hit me. I hit him. That's the way. Wait, did I forget to. 
There you go. I was about to say. From his personality. The United States has defeated Angola by the score of 116 to 48. The game may have ended in a rout, but afterwards, the result was overshadowed by the controversy. Wilson the elbow. Well, he hit me, I hit him. That's the way it is. Charles made you look like the ugly Americans, which we were trying not to do. We said to Charles, look, man, you're a reflection of all of us. So if you do it, they're not going to write the article that Charles Barkley did. They're going to say the dream team. Media does so. Barkley had stained a dream debut for the Americans. But in their next game against Croatia, Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan grabbed the spotlight with the focus on their matchup with one of Europe's best players, Tony Kukoc. Major storyline that carries into this game involves Tony Kukoc, second round pick of the Chicago Bulls back in 1989. The Bulls made a strong push to sign him last season. At that time, general managers in the league were trying to come up with gems, you know, make their discoveries overseas. And Kraus thought this guy could play in the NBA. While Jordan and Pippen had been winning back-to-back -back titles, Chicago GM Jerry Kraus had been publicly wooing Kukoc. We're not playing against Tony Kukoc. We were playing against Jerry Kraus in a Croatian uniform. But unfortunately for the real Tony Kukoc, he was now the target of the world's two best defensive players. They were debating who was going to guard him. No, 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 I got it. No, 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 I got it. I'm looking at Michael and Scotty, and they're ready for, like, blood. Like, man. We knew the world was going to be watching. We knew everyone wanted to see what Tony Kukoc was like, and we were going to give him the worst experience he ever had on the basketball court. Pippen drew the initial assignment of shadowing Kukoc and harassed the Croatian from the opening whistle. It was hard it's to run across the half court without a ball. And, and uh, with the ball, it was just, here, somebody else get it. Tony definitely wasn't getting a shot up, and he wasn't going to score. Kukak is nothing for four, and he's contributed nothing. We wanted to go guard him on the bench. Kukak is called for the offensive foul, and the pressure continues. And after Pippen wore Kukoc down, it was Jordan's turn. Kukoc. Stolen by Jordan, he reads it better than anyone. Slammed up. Them dudes were all over him. Jordan rejected Kukoc. Here's a three on two. Pippen. I had questions from my teammates during the game, like, what is going on? What did, do you not see that they're really trying to? Uh, get you off the court, and we're like, so what? I guess that's that's how NBA game is played. Pippen, Jordan. I feel, I feel really bad for them, dude, because, like, they're going after Jerry Krause, not Tony Kuko. Like, I just feel bad for them because they were just trying to prove a point to Jerry Krause and I guess the crowd, too, and he didn't have a chance. But on the other hand, I'm pretty sure them doing that to him because he thinks that's how Americans play is what he said. It made him a lot better because I remember him being pretty good at the NBA on the Bulls, whatever. And it probably did make him a lot better, to be honest with you. See that they're really trying to uh, get you off the court. And we're like, so what? I guess that's, that's how NBA game is played. Pippen, Jordan and the Americans cruise to another victory. This one by 38 points. But the domination had its detractors. This team of goal stars is almost too good. Is it a positive or a negative? The question was now being asked, was the dream team too great for its own good? This team of all stars is almost too good. Some think that we should go back to the collegians. It's been too easy. I think then we ought to ban the uh, African runners from the 10,000 meters because they make it look so easy as well. <laughs> uh, this is about our best, and this is wonderful for the sport of basketball.
Irvin, uh, there's been some comments that the Dream Team is getting all the attention and there seems to be some resentment about it. Have you heard about it and do you have any feelings about it? Uh, basically, you know, we haven't heard about it. We're just here to do our job. The media may have been looking for signs of a backlash, but in Barcelona and in the world beyond, the embrace of the Dream Team was universal. You had a Ruga stand out and root against Picasso? I mean, I mean, seriously. They rooted for genius at work. Dude, I hate the media sometimes, man, because, like, they, you can have, like, something really good going, and then the media wants to find something bad just so that, you know, they can sell papers or, you know, whatever they did back then, papers, I guess, and, uh, you know, network ratings and all kinds of stuff, so. The embrace of the Dream Team was universal. You had a Ruga stand out and root against Picasso? I mean, I mean, seriously. They rooted for genius at work. I kept thinking that the attention would dissipate. They're going to play the first. the dream team reveled in the Olympic experience more than Charles Barkley. After throwing the controversial elbow against Angola, Barkley had emerged as the team's most visible player. Anyway, guys, that's uh, it for part four. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, the next part is definitely the final part because there's only like uh, 18 minutes left or so. So uh, make sure you subscribe. If y'all, you know, like the series and stuff, um, leave a comment below. Tell me how your day is. Uh, some video suggestions or anything like that in the world. But anyway, I'm out. Peace.